coming up. In the midst of World War II, American commanders realized that they had a serious problem. As they were pounding German and Japanese targets from the air, they were losing bombers and air crews at an alarming and unsustainable rate. To try and help solve this problem, they reached out to some of the top minds available. In this video, we will take a look at the incredible Jewish mathematician who escaped Nazi tyranny and how he would use his intellectual brilliance to help save the lives of thousands of American airmen. In case you guys haven't seen, I've got some great new fanware. If you want to support TJ3 History and grab something awesome, please check out the link in the description. Enjoy. In the 1930s, Adolf Hitler was pushing Germany's power outward in all directions. Not only was he expanding Germany's territory, but he was also expanding the discrimination and persecution of the Jews. In 1938, Austria was annexed into Nazi Germany. This was not good news for the Jews of the region who had already begun to feel the pressure of Nazi intolerance. One of these such Jews was Abraham Wald. Wald was a Hungarian-born mathematician who had studied with many of the great minds at the University of Vienna. Here he obtained a PhD in mathematics and became a well-renowned scholar in the region. As the Nazi regime continued to tear through Europe in 1938, they left a path of destruction and anti-Semitic violence in their wake. Abraham Wald was effectively pushed out of his home in Romania. The Jewish mathematician and his family had a stroke of luck when Wald was offered a position at a university in the United States to work on his econometrics research. This opportunity would save both him and his family from the horrible treatment of the Jews that would take place over the next few years in Europe. And while he was thrilled to escape that fate, Wald could have never known the opportunity that awaited him in the United States. In his new home of America, he found himself in the Statistical Research Group at Columbia University, a fairly literal and straightforward title for a group of mathematicians and statisticians who use their analytical prowess to solve complex problems and assist the military in a variety of ways in World War II. As such, the research groups like this one were vital in improving the military in anything from the development of accurate bomb sites to the creation of the atom bomb. It was in this environment that Wald would utilize a concept that would assist the Navy and Army and save hundreds of flight crews in the process. In order to fully understand how something as abstract and immaterial as mathematics can affect so many aspects of war, one must first understand the role it plays in military strategies. Behind every successful wartime power was a group of academics that the military would place great amounts of trust and dependence on. They relied on them to solve tricky problems that would aid their planes and other war machines to be safer for their troops and deadlier to the enemy. As one of these mathematicians, Wald's job focused on looking at the practices in place during the war and trying to find where they could be improved. However, since Wald was technically considered an enemy alien after his immigration from Eastern Europe, his setup was a bit unusual. There was a running joke in the research group that Wald's secretaries had to snatch his notes and essays out of his hands as soon as he was finished writing them because he didn't have the proper security clearance to read his own work. While this is likely a bit exaggerated, the irony of the joke comes from the fact that Wald could not have been more against the Nazi regime. These Germans would have likely killed Wald and his family had they stayed in their home much longer. As such, he utilized his skills to assist the Allies in defeating the Axis powers as best he could. One day, the Navy and Army Air Corps approached his research group with a seemingly simple yet complex problem. Their forces were losing a significant amount of bombers and crew members to enemy fire. In order to figure out the cause, the Navy created a model that illustrated where their planes had the most bullet holes per square foot, based on the observation of planes that had returned from their missions. This information was gathered and recorded by the grounds crews that would document and repair the damaged aircraft upon returning from combat. Their thinking was that if they added armor to the places that had the most damage from enemy fire, then they could improve their survival rate. So, in order to do this, they needed to decide the appropriate distribution of armor in these places. Planes must have a balanced weight between the plane, crew, fuel, ammunition, and armor. 
If the plane's armor was too heavy, the result could be it flying too slow, making it an easy target for enemy fire, or the plane not being able to take off at all. So the military wanted Wald's research group to figure out the best way to put the armor in these areas so that it did not throw off the balance of the plane. When presented with this problem, Wald soon found a massive glare in the reasoning that could be attributed to a phenomenon called survivorship bias, the logical error of focusing on people or things that survive, thus overlooking the ones that did not since they are not able to be present. The Navy and other military divisions could only examine and study the aircraft that made it back from enemy territory safely. Planes that were shot down behind enemy lines or into the ocean could not be retrieved for examination afterwards. The Army and Navy groups were, in fact, basing their models only off of the planes that survived, meaning that the areas that received the most bullet holes weren't just examples of where they were most commonly hit, but they were examples of where the planes could be commonly hit and continue flying. In other words, these were the locations on the plane where the crew and components could take the most damage and still survive. Wald realized that the Navy was about to unnecessarily reinforce the least vulnerable parts of their planes with armor. In the simplified and shortened version of this story that is usually told, Wald tells the Navy to armor the areas that they didn't highlight, the opposite areas of where the bullet holes were being recorded since these areas were in fact the locations on the plane that were taking fire and resulting in fatal hits. In a little more detail, however, Wald used complex and technical formulas to analyze the data that he was presented with and estimate where the planes that had been shot down were likely taking hits. Wald's discoveries lined up with the military's own expectations and understandings of what brought down a plane. For example, an aircraft that takes a direct hit to its fuel tanks will usually not make it very far. If a bomber loses an engine, it has a very small chance of coming home. And especially if the cockpit takes a direct hit, the bomber is likely to go down due to the injuries sustained by the crew. Using this information, he figured out how likely a plane could be brought down depending on where it was hit in any given area. As a result, the military took Wald's findings and placed armor on the areas that he determined the most vulnerable, specifically the engines, and the results were immediate. Planes began to survive more missions despite being shot, and the rate of casualties among the Allied air crews dropped. Although these small changes didn't win the war on their own, it allowed the military to focus their efforts on other key areas instead of scrambling to replace aircraft and crew members. Wald assisted in bringing down the cost of success in battle and saved countless American lives in the process, all from the comfort of his university study. His essays on this topic were so effective and ahead of their time that they would be utilized and studied by the military long after World War II was over. Unfortunately, Wald would not be able to contribute his expertise firsthand in future wars. Ironically, on December 13th of 1950, Wald and his wife were killed in a plane crash in the southern Indian mountains while on their way to a lecture tour at the invitation of the Indian government. Wald's discoveries, however, would continue to influence countless papers and experiments for years to come. I hope you enjoyed this historical recreation. Please make sure to click subscribe and comment if you have any ideas for future videos. If you want to support my content and get awesome bonus videos, please check out the Patreon link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.